What's up, everyone? It's Date Fails. I'm Kate Quigley. I'm here. Brenton is recording me right now. On my right, I've got Brenton Biddlecombe, hilarious comedian and also the social media guy for all things comedy and the comedy store. And Brenton, aren't you like the youngest paid regular in comedy store history? No, not the youngest. I think that's Kidding. Bill Hicks. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like 17 or 19 Holy. or something. Damn. How old were you when you got passed? Uh, I was 25. Oh, okay. Wow, I he thought He just you... has a young face. I know. I thought you were like 21. No, I'm 28. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. I'm really good at this game. Uh, and of course- That's uh, how Caden's up in jail in that's... a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was oh, 18. God. I know. That could happen. You know what? The way my week's been going, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens this weekend. I think it'll- it's all going downhill. We'll talk about it. Uh, it's only Thursday, Kate. It, a lot can happen. <laughs> um, so on my left, of course, I have my BFF, hilarious comedian, actress, everything, Jen Sturger. I'm adding adjunct professor to that. Yeah. I taught a class this week at University of Florida. Yeah, talk about that. You went. You were like a, a college professor. By the way, you must have been like the hottest college professor. Like every student must have been like. Well, the football team did hit on me. Like really? they came and they sat all down. All of them? Just a few of them. <laughs> Enough that you'd have been like, I'll take all of your phone numbers on the sign-in sheet. Like, you'd have passed it down. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Did you hand out my number to all the players? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, what kind of friend are you, Jen? Uh, <laughs> no, how was it? It was a lot of fun. What did the you teach? I taught sports media. But it was really cool because I sat in the back of the class, and I dressed like a kid, and I put, like, a baseball hat on. And then I started talking shit to the professor in the middle of the class. <laughs> Like, like five minutes in because they said that the speaker had canceled for the day. And so I was like, so wait, do you like want a speaker? And I'm dressed like a kid and I look like a kid and I'm their size. You know what I mean? Like actually a lot of them were bigger than me, yeah. which was depressing. Well, um, especially the football players. Well, the greatest part about that is when I sat down in the class before the class actually started, one of them looked over at me. And of course his name was Chauncey. And, <laughs> of course. and he looks over at me and he goes, hey. Ain't you that girl that sits back there with the white Nike hat on? And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. And so when it got inter- when I got introduced finally and like ran down the aisle, like I was like all in WrestleMania, you know? Yeah. Um, everyone was losing their mind because they thought I w- was just some kid talking shit to the professor. Like, That's they thought so they were gonna funny. Fight. This was at Florida State? No, it was at Florida. Oh, sorry. It was that's... at the rival school. So. Oh, no, it was? No, no. Did they yeah. still know who you were, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Did everybody, everybody must have wanted, like, pictures and stuff afterwards? Mm-hmm. Nice. I was like, you guys better put every filter imaginable on this. Oh, st- <laughs> Dude, I'm surprised you don't, when people ask me for photos, I'm like, can I just see that real quick before you post it? And then if it's bad, I just delete it off their phone. I oh, something the happened. Phone I accidentally deleted it. Great. Brenton, you're the man. So we brought Brenton in today. Okay, like I have to. That was some really aggro music you started this episode off. I know. This is. I'm a little angry. Today's episode of Date Fails is brought to you by anger. That's pretty much what's happening. It's brought to you by PMS. Let's keep it real. Uh, Okay, I'm also PMSing. So it's great. I text Jen on the way here. I'm like, I'm really pissed off at men, and I'm PMSing. So what happened, Kate? (laughs) I love how you feign concern. (laughs) What happened, Kate? Okay, well, I don't even know where to start. I think we have to backtrack to last week's episode. Okay, yeah. So last week on Date Fails, I had my friends Carrie, Ariel, and Krista. And basically, we talked about doing a 30-day challenge, all three of us, well, four of us, because we're all just not doing well with men. We all have keep dating assholes and keep falling for assholes. And so we decided that we need to learn to love ourselves and take a break from guys. And so we all decided we were going to go 30 days without having sex, no sex. And also we were going to do other things like daily, um, what do you call it? Meditations. And, you know, we were going to send each other like inspirational quotes and things. <laughs> Really dumb shit that girls do, okay? This is some real Spice Girls shit. Isn't that a Josh Hartnett movie? (laughs) Exactly. Well, 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so that was the plan. And um, it ruined his career, by the way. It ruined his career. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's good that I didn't make it. Women were like, we want to see a movie about Josh Hartnett not having sex. No, we don't. That's the answer to that question. Goodbye. Uh, yeah. Well, so 
we all left here and I was like so inspired. And all these people, by the way, like listeners were like sending me messages. In fact, one guy even sent me PayPal money and he said, hey, this is so you have something else to do this month besides have sex. Use this money and have some fun. And make if you're it listening, your 30 days. Wow. I'm really bored and I need something to do <laughs> just for so the you know, next three months. Just so you know, he sent $15. So I don't know how much fun he was expecting me to have with it, but I was so grateful. He knows that. you play at the dollar store, King. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Okay? <laughs> Seriously, that is a really good time for me. We could we could have an hour of fun at the dollar store with that. I just blocked his number. So I was super excited. Yay! Yeah. I was really proud and excited. Every time my phone went off, I wasn't like worried if it was drama and it felt good. Have you ever blocked a girl's number? No. Oh, well. <laughs> I feel like he's pretty on the level. He might not yeah. be the right person I'm not, for this. I'm not the right <laughs> guy for this. Brent, have you ever had any dramatic relationships that were, like, extremely tumultuous? Not really, no. And I've been in a very good relationship for over two years now. Um, oh. Met her on Tinder. Did you really? No, you did, did not. Yeah. You met did a... you lock her on your balcony? <laughs> did you hear about that? No. Oh, my God. Someone sent me this story today. They were like, you have to talk about this. This girl and guy met on Tinder. She went to his place she got drunk apparently they started fighting and he locked her on the balcony and wouldn't let her back in the apartment so she tried to climb down and she, 14 and she died oh, she God. fell and she died and someone sent it to me and was like well at least no matter how bad your love life is it can't be going this bad I was like no I'll probably end up jumping off a balcony <laughs> let's be realistic Kate's not dating anyone that lives on the 14th story of anything <laughs> no one I would date would have a balcony you she's right you can't stack benches on top of each other <laughs> <laughs> so okay so Brenton, you met your girl on tinder yeah no way how what does she do uh she works at hulu cool she's like a real job oh yeah what she's what was a real person what i know <laughs> I'm like, what was your first date uh we went and saw the dark knight in the dome at Arclight. oh, oh so wow. that's a cop out though you can't go to a movie <laughs> I was going to say that such too. a great time sitting in the dark and not speaking to one another. This we went to a baseball game well. the second date like two nights later. Oh, okay, so that's was... cool. Movie wow, that... you followed up that fast? Oh, yeah. Wait, the second date you went to a baseball game? How long in between the first and the second date? Two days. Kate, he's already spent more money on this girl in two dates than people have spent on you in the last two <laughs> Thank years. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> we, we talked for like uh, a month before we met up. It wasn't like... Oh, oh you did? Cute. Yeah. How interesting. So... Because usually if guys hit me up on those dating apps and they don't ask me out within the first, like, four or five back and forth texts. Kate I, has no chill. I have no chill. I This is what I do. I write them and I go, like, this happened yesterday. I matched with a guy on Raya yesterday. Cop out, by the way. He had a photo of him in a Clippers outfit playing basketball. So I thought he was a, cl thought he was a Clipper. <laughs> then, oh, you fell for that. <laughs> and then I did some research and turned out he was a Clipper for, like, ten days. And now he plays in in the D League or whatever in the the what, development league. Yes, yeah. he plays in the D, which is still fine. And yeah. he's really hot. He's six ten though. I'm not sure. I think that's too big of a height gap. Her ex I, before me was yeah. was six five or six three. And how tall Ooh. is she? She's my height. Like we're the same height. Well, that's okay. I think. Yeah. I think because I've dated a lot of six fours, and I think that's okay. But six ten, that's like I think if we were having sex, I couldn't even reach his face. I think he'd be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. So, Sorry. So, okay, so you met your girl on Tinder, first date movie. Did you do anything else that night of the movie or just the movie? Just the movie. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Huh. See, it's possible to go yeah. on a date with a person and Jen, have sex with them. That's okay? not what I meant. You know I don't have sex on the first date ever. Only once, and it wasn't a date. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Only I forget that we're working in a non-visual <laughs> medium right now. So people can't just see me staring at you in disbelief. Actually, people can see so, you. So, continue. Yeah, okay. So, back to the 30-day challenge. I am fascinated by your Tinder story, though. We're going to get back to this. and Because I might start dating on Tinder now. You just gave me hope. I'm Jesus on Tinder. I'm on Tinder. <laughs> Last night, I Tindered like 50 people in San Diego. I like to have options on the road. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jen, people can't see you. Okay. Anyway, back to this. So, <laughs> so, so I blocked his number. Let's call that guy Dickhead. I blocked his. I do all the time. <laughs> I blocked his number, and I felt great about it. And then, um, and then I started meditating, and that's pretty going pretty well. I I got a mantra off the internet. What I, is it? Like you can't tell it. You're not allowed to tell your mantra. 
It's, it's probably a lyric to a Spice Girls song or something <laughs> super dumb. Boys to Matt. But it's fine. <laughs> no, it's like, a, it's not even a word. It's just a sound. It's just a sound you make. You know what I mean? Like a um kind of Oh, sound. no, no. Now I have to know what your mantra <laughs> sounds like, Kate. I'll, I'll play it for you. I found it on YouTube. Oh, so, so I have It's a, just a cat going, yes! So, <laughs> yeah, I have a mantra and I'm meditating and, and things are good. So I leave the podcast. That's day one. And I had a booty call scheduled for that night, okay? So you had to cancel that, mm, Yeah, obviously. Yeah, and you know this booty call. Let's call him. I don't know what to name these guys. Let's just call him um, Brock. Okay. So, so I'm supposed to that hang That actually sounds realistic. Okay. <laughs> so I'm supposed to hang out with Brock. Brock and I have only hooked up once, but the sex was like really, really, really good. But I knew I didn't want to date him, so I never saw him again. But then I decided I might as well use him as a booty call. So I had set him up for that night. Yeah. And then I, when I decided on the 30-day challenge, I text him and I said, Hey, it's a long story, but I can't fuck you tonight. So um, we'll have to hang some other time. And he was like, okay, I hope everything's okay. And I was like, yeah, everything's fine. I'm just working on myself. Yeah, I was like, I'm just taking a break from sex right now. And he wrote back, um, herpes sucks. (laughs) 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 And, and And then, though, like three hours later, he texts me, which came as a complete surprise. And he said, you know, we don't have to have sex. We can just hang out. I actually like hanging out with you, like, as a friend, if you want to do that. And I was, like, so shocked. So I was like, okay, why not? We should do that. So we got together after my show that night. We had two drinks, and we made out. And I wanted to fuck him really bad, but I didn't. I left the bar, and I went home alone. Thank you. And I was really proud of myself. That was a slow clap. Thank you. Well, I was really proud of myself because at that point, I'd already gone one week without sex mm-hmm. by accident, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so so that was like eight days. So I you left. Can't, you can't retroactive <laughs> your days. Like, it's not like a DL where you're like, it's a retroactive <sighs> DL. Like, you can't. No, you can't do that. Really? No. All right. The 30-day challenge starts on the day you issue the 30-day challenge. Okay, but I'm just saying to be fair to me. So technically we're on day two, three. Okay, but technically I'm just saying it had already been a week and I was really horny and I still said no. So I just feel like I should get a little extra. All right, what's the next one? All right. So that was day one. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm sorry. That was day uh, that was day two. That was Friday. We taped on Thursday. That was Friday. Okay. That was day two. That was so day I made two. it to day two. Okay. All right. I need that because I don't remember what happened. That's my cheat sheet. Okay. So day, oh, day three. Oh, by the way, one thing I didn't throw in is part of the reason I didn't fuck him is because I purposely didn't shave so that I wouldn't fuck him. But that works. it does yeah. help. It really does work. Yeah. I was like, ooh, he, I can't. Brenda, would you care if you went to go hook up with a girl no. and she hadn't shaved? No, not really. Because like, by the way, when girls who are like, like have lasered and like they maintain <laughs> stuff really well. Don't yeah, how shave. Long has it it's been? literally it's been like, like a day. Okay. It's literally yeah, like it's literally like a stray hair. Yeah. No, but it was it's a, a bit of a tiny bit of stubble. But for me, that's enough to be like, oof, no one's going in there. That's it. So. Oh my god. Brent's horrified. By the way, he's like, why did I sit into this? Chair? Kate, there's <laughs> things that are growing hair in your refrigerator that have more hair on them than your vagina yes. does. <laughs> well, I met my legs. I'm my legs. It had oh. been a day. But oh, for me, ridiculous. I shave every day almost, every other day. Okay, so moving on. The next night, um, I had a gig, so I had to go to Santa Barbara, so there was no... Just a lot of old people there. There's something I'm forgetting. Oh, my God. I'm forgetting the most important part of the story. The day of the challenge, the day we taped the podcast, this is a big, important thing. I went out that night and I ran into a friend. Now, this is a guy I've been friends with for like three years. And we used to live in the same building. And we have always had like crazy sexual tension. He's one of those friends that I was like, oh, if I was going to bang one of my friends, it would totally be this guy. But he always had a girlfriend from the first time I met him. So a crazy girlfriend. Yes. And, but this guy and I, we always had this flirty thing and it's always been a thing where he's like, if I didn't have a girlfriend, we'd be dating. And I'm like, I know totally, but we never hooked up. So I run into him the night of the podcast and 
he tells me him and his girlfriend broke up. But they'd only broken up like two weeks before. So I was like, oh, yeah. Well, first of all, I just started this 30-day challenge, so that's good. And secondly, you just broke up with this girl, so you should probably take a minute and deal with this shit, you know, and we can maybe hang out. And he's like, well, let's just hang tonight and go get drinks. So we did. We hung out that night, and we went and had drinks. This is the night of the 30-day challenge. We went and had drinks, and I got kind of drunk, and I made out with this guy at the bar. How do you forget what happened on night one? (laughs) This was the day I canceled the booty call. I canceled the booty call, and then I ran into this guy day one. I didn't plan on it. It just happened, and I definitely didn't plan on making out. That's the universe having a sense of humor. (laughs) It's like, by the way, we're going to give you the best possible dick you could possibly have tonight and you have to say no to it yeah jen knows this guy he's like brad pitt hot yeah he's so hot yeah. and like and he's actually cool so it's the worst possible person to run into who's like i'm suddenly single uh, okay i felt for you that night I, you. I usually don't i'm usually like you you brought this on yourself jen but. is always like don't you dare hook up with him don't you and i text her and i go hey so and so broke up with his girlfriend and he's hitting on me and she's like you have my permission to fuck him <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do it. Do it for all of us. Do it for our country. Do it for America. Like, I was like, was. do it. I need a report. She was. In the morning. Goodbye. Okay, so that happened day one. I forgot about the making out. Day two, I hung out with the booty call guy, but we did not have sex. So that's where we're at. And I have to go on with this to say that all day on day two, hot guy, we'll call him Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is texting blowing me. Blowing you up. Blowing me up. Like, texting me every two hours, all day. We got to hang out again. I dig you. I'm finally single. Let's do this. Da-da-da. Whatever. So, that night, I don't, you know, I hung out with the other guy. I kind of blew off Brad Pitt because I knew I would probably bang him if I hung out with him. So, I did not hang out with him. Then, day three, I had to go to Santa Barbara for a gig. Thank God. So, I was away. So there was no possibility of anything happening day three. So fast forward to day four. Day four is Sunday. So Sunday is football day. I'm hanging out with my friends watching football. I go to the pool. I have a couple drinks. Oh, God. Brad Pitt is still texting me all day. I love that we're calling him Brad Pitt. Yeah. He's still texting me all day. So Sunday night. He's like, hey, let's meet up. Let's hang out. Come uh, come meet up with me and my friend at this bar. And I do. I go meet up with him and his friend. And we just hang out for a couple hours. And then afterwards, he's like, you want to get out of here? I live right up the street. And I'm like, um, I'll go home with you, but no sex. We can't have sex. I'm on a 30-day challenge. And also, you just broke up with your girl. And I was like, and I actually like you. I've known you for a while. So if we fuck, it's going to be like... You know, it's going to mean something. It's not just going to be like a one-off to me. So he's like, yeah, no sex. We'll just hang out, you know? So we go back to his place. That's some bullshit. (laughs) Well, for sure he wanted to fuck, right? I mean, guys want to fuck. But he was he's really a nice guy. Yeah. He's not a dick. So I really believe that he does like me. But, you know, he just broke up with a girl he's been with for years. So he can't be ready, right? You know what just occurred to me, though? What, Aaron? It's the real Brad Pitt. Just broke up with someone about two weeks ago. So this could That's be That's the perfect name for him. Yeah. Duh. I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna comment on that. How many kids does he have? He, he has like nine, I think, from different countries. But a United Colors of Benetton ad. Oh, uh, so I go back to Brad's place and lots of heavy petting, no sex. Did not fuck him. And can I just say if ever a girl deserved some kind of trophy or medal, because leaving that place without fucking this guy is maybe the hardest thing I've done. I mean, I have you ever had such insane chemistry with someone you just know the sex is going to be like retarded? Yeah. <laughs> so you were just like, <laughs> but I didn't do it. I walked away. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jen. You, like, did a victory lap? I was so proud. Okay. How proud was I? And I left, and I texted everyone I know, and I said, oh, my God, not only did I block Dickhead's phone number this week, haven't talked to him, been meditating every day. Also, I made out with Brad Pitt, didn't fuck him. I am, like, killing Killing the 30-day challenge. Okay. Okay. That's day four. So, uh, day five, 
I was super busy. I had a gig that night. He was also texting me again every hour or two all day and wanted to hang that night, and I didn't. I blew him off again. I was, again, very proud. Plus, you had an early call time the next day. Well, that's beside the point, Jen. <laughs> Let's be real. Jen! I, I couldn't even convince you to come to the airport to pick me up when I realized that my flight was on the next day, so it's totally irrelevant, but whatever. How many times have I driven to the valley? <laughs> Listen, how many times have I driven all the way to the valley to fuck dickhead when I have, like, a 6 a.m. call time? Because when you And know- you wouldn't come get me at the airport? Yeah, I know. Well, to <laughs> be fair... You don't go down on me. If you had offered, Kate, you give me a ride from LAX and I will promise you 10 orgasms, I would have picked you up. Pass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so it's so weird that, that my lesbianism draws a line there. I'm like a drunk makeout session, maybe, but like actually going for like fish sandwich, no thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't blame you. It's gross. I, uh, I really did have an early call time. I had to get up at like 7 a.m., so I went home. Okay, so now we're on day six. So day six. uh, Or day 13, as Kate likes to think of it. (laughs) Whatever. Yes, well, kind of. You know, that makes me feel better. Now that that we're calling it that. I wake up day six. I'm at work shooting again. Brad is texting me all day. And here's what sucks. Now I'm starting to kind of like him because that's what happens to girls. Like, guys don't get that. And he's saying things to me like... I really like you. I think we'd be really great. We should actually date. I would totally date you. I'm not getting, by the way, the whole time I'm like, dude, you're probably going to get back together with your girl. Nobody breaks up after this long and doesn't at least get back together once. So you need to slow your roll. And he's like, no, no, we're not going to get back together. We're not going to get back together. Right. So I'm like, all right, he's texting me all day, day six. I'm like, Maybe, you know, we can hang again. Let me think about it. Then oh, he God. then he texts me a couple hours later and he says, hey, listen, I got to tell you because I don't want you to find out some other way that um, Sheila, his ex, is coming into town today to pick up her stuff. And she really wants to talk. <laughs> Brenton just cringed. <laughs> <laughs> she really wants to talk about getting back together, but I don't want to. I just want you to know that she's going to be here. And so, you know, I don't want you to see it on Facebook or something and freak out. Because when I go to pick up my shit at my ex's house, I'm like, going to pick up my shit. Yeah, I mean, and, and I wrote... Feeling a- sad. <laughs> <laughs> Check in at Woodland Hills. Like- I know, I know. And so I wrote him back and was like, listen, I'm not surprised. I kind of saw this coming. In my mind, I'm like, they're totally getting back together. Obviously, he's warning me because he doesn't want to look like an asshole. So I'm like... Hey, totally saw this coming. No big deal. If you guys get back together, you and I are cool. Nothing really happened. We just kind of made out. And, you know, that's fine. Thanks for being honest. So I you really left it appreciate there. It. So I left it there. And then uh, he was like, well, can we still just, like, talk and stuff? And I was like, well, I think we should chill for a while until, you you know, this is really over for you. Because it's not. And he was like, okay. And then, like, an hour later, he texted me, like, actually, no, I'm not doing that. And then he kept texting me and texting me and texting me and texting me. And and I was trying to be strong. But then, to be honest with you, the minute I found out his girl was coming back into town and the minute I realized what a horrible, horrible idea it would be to fuck him, it just made me want to fuck him like 10 times more. <laughs> 10? <laughs> I mean, you know when you shouldn't fuck someone, how much more you want to do it? No, Kate, I don't. Really? 10... Brenton, is it, are you like that? No. <laughs> We're well-adjusted adults, yeah. Kate. That's why. All right, fine. Well, so... Even 19-year-old <laughs> Brent thinks it's a bad idea. All right, well, I I said no. I'm not hanging out with you. I made, I made other plans. Here are my plans for the night. This is what's happening. I'm going out with my friends, so you have a good night. And that was that. And then, because I am me and I can't ever stick to anything, when I went to meet my friends at the bar, I text him. And I was like, you know what? Jen, stop it. (laughs) I was like, listen, 
you and I were already friends before. We can still be friends. If you want to come hang out with me and my friends at the bar, you can. I won't touch you because we're not going to fuck, but, like, you can come hang out. And mm-hmm. and then what happened is <laughs> he did, but all my friends flaked, so it ended up just being the two of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then one thing led to another, and we got a little drunk, and then we went back to his place. And then I was like, well, I'm definitely not fucking you, but I'll come up. And then and then we fucked. And then I fucked him. <laughs> so the point of the story is I broke the 30-day challenge on day six. But it was kind of day 13. Thanks, Jen. That makes me feel better. It on day six, day I broke it. We hooked up. <laughs> But and now you're in a really weird place. Now I'm in a weird situation. place. So I left his place that night. I didn't stay. And he was like, do you want to stay? And I'm like, no, I really don't. I'm like at his place and I'm looking around and like his ex's stuff is still there. It's too weird. That's, the, that's weird. the first clue that something's wrong, right? Is when the ex's stuff is still there. Like when you broke up with girls, like what did you do with their stuff? Like their personal belongings? Yeah. Brenton? Uh, well, I've only had one situation where that's happened. One breakup? Yeah. Where you were, like, living together? Yeah. Okay. How long did it take her to get her stuff out? Uh, It was a few months. Really? What? Yeah. Wow. Now, did she, like, leave stuff behind to, like, drag it out or, like, what? I don't know. Um, Just took her a while to get it. And I think she was trying to get situated. And I wasn't the kind of guy that was like, hey, you have to get this now or I'm going to put it all out. Sure. You're a nice guy. You're nice. Yeah. Well, but let me ask you. I'll this. be like, it's on the front porch. Come by and get it whenever you feel like it. Jen yeah, would. I, I don't have. That. I don't have that in me. Um, Jen is so I'm much. Sa- to quote a girl at the University of Florida the other day, she goes, "Jen is savage AF." You are. <laughs> Jen is. Jen is like, like, because I haven't finished the story with Brad Pitt yet, but Jen's. Jen is telling me to send like these mean to. Um, Jen is so much meaner than me, but like in a great way. Like she treats guys the way they should, they deserve to be treated when they treat her a certain way. I am like a pushover and I'm way too nice. But so let me ask you this. When you were a girl that you lived with, how long were you guys together? Uh, Almost a year, but we'd only been living together for three months. And when you broke up, did you get back together at all? No. You, so you ended it, she left, but then she was slowly getting her stuff out? Who broke up mm-hmm. with who? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to name names. No, I meant like who broke up with who. Oh, she broke up with me. Oh, she did. Oh. Yeah. And you still let her leave her stuff there for three months. God, you are a nice what? guy. Yeah. Wow. Are your parents still together? Oh yeah. <laughs> I knew it. And exactly. my and my grandparents. <laughs> exactly. This is what happens. Fuck when you, you and your well adjusted family. Adjusted. family. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, so so I'll, he is like, do you want to stay over? And I and by the way, this is kind of a sign though, because he was like, "Do you want to stay over?" Like, no, can... you left out the most important part of the story. I did. So, Kate tells me, "Well, here's the thing: we had sex on the couch. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't take me in his room." Yeah, I thought it was really weird. He didn't try to take me in the bedroom. Because... And then when he offered to let her sleep over, he was like, "We can just sleep out here." Really? Like it was like a high school. He said, like, in he the said... room sleeping. <laughs> She was there. Um, she like came back like while we were talking. Guys, just sitting here nodding his head very quietly in his booth. Like this girl is so. Aaron's dumb. like, what the? F-? No, okay. He was like, we could sleep here, and then I could tell he looked like I looked at him weird, and then he was like, oh, I mean, or you know, in in the bedroom. But I could tell that he felt he must still in his mind feel like he's cheating, like he can't take another yeah, girl in there, or he's got pictures of her everywhere. So right, for sure. There's like shit. So I was like, no. You know, I I don't really like to stay over, which is true. I don't stay over unless I'm like really super into someone. And I knew in my heart. Plus, if he cuddles her, it's over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew. I'm like, if I sleep here, I will wake up with feelings, period. No matter what, I can't help it. When I sleep. Feelings are burning, but feelings. (laughs) (laughs) So I already was like, fuck, I shouldn't have fucked him. I mean, I knew the minute it was done and I got dressed, I got out of there pretty quick. And then I got home. What's your excuse when you leave right after? In this case, I was just like, I'm really tired, which I was. It was There's late. a bed right there. So what's your excuse for leaving? I told him I don't sleep over unless I'm like seriously dating someone. I just said that. Really? Yeah, I said, I don't sleep over. And he was like, well, you'll sleep over next time. And I was like, probably not. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm honest because that's how I catch really strong feelings. You're like, look, you don't live in Reseda, so this Jen? is way easier. Jen? <laughs> this is a way easier drive home for me and a way cheaper Uber. So, do you understand how happy I was for a minute? Can I just say, like, and the reason I'm so disappointed because I was so excited to be into a guy who's super hot actually cool that i have amazing chemistry with who isn't an asshole who actually was being nice to me like that's never happened to me ever in my life that i've been like really into someone and sexually attracted to them and they're nice never happened before yeah but what part of your brain was like his ex-girlfriend's coming into town this is the perfect night to have no no sex. no i knew it was a bad idea okay i knew it was a bad idea and and but alcohol man don't drink, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol fucks with... Like, I never would have fucked him sober. And that. so I go home, okay? I take an Uber. I leave. Um, and by the way, can I say one you other thing? you discuss this with your Uber on the way home? <laughs> I feel like that would be a really funny periscope from now on. Whenever you leave someplace, like in the walk of shame, you just talk to them like a free therapy session and see how much you can get them to interact with you. <laughs> No, but can I say one other thing? You're like, can I record an episode of my podcast right now? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about that. Why is it like the minute a guy fucks you, though, their behavior changes immediately? Because the, the other night when I was at his place and we didn't fuck, I called an Uber and he walked me down to the Uber and he kissed me goodbye at the Uber. And this time after we fucked, I called an Uber and he's like, do you remember how to get out? <laughs> like, Guys, after you fuck them, it's like, up. Oh, don't have to walk into the car Was anymore. Was he naked when he said that? No. Oh, because that would have been a good excuse. I mean, he was in his, uh, he was in his underwear. Still, uh -huh. I don't care. I mean, come on. Okay, but Put anyway. Put on some flip-flops and walk me down. Yeah. Yeah. So I leave. I go home. Already regret it. I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. And she knows it's the day that, like, the ex is the coming The ex is in. coming, mm -hmm. right? So I wake up the next morning. And I sent him a text. And I was like, hey. He sent you a text. I text him first. Oh. I didn't tell you this? No. Oh, this is a great boner killer text to get from a girl you fucked the night before. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him a text that said, hey, I got to be honest with you. I feel a little guilty about what happened last night. Uh, and I, I don't remember what else. I, I was like, I'm also pretty hungover. If we hang again, we should probably stay sober. Hope everything goes well today. <laughs> like, my text was pretty much like we shouldn't have fucked is basically the text. And um, he wrote back, uh, I'm hungover too. Definitely shouldn't booze for a while. Definitely do not regret anything about last night though. And I was like, ha ha, okay, cool. <laughs> like, I didn't know what to say. And then, uh, and then whatever, he wrote me some other small talk shit. And then he, around like noon he was like kill it tonight you know have a great show i didn't like kill her tonight <laughs> no man because here's the thing we were friends and the truth is if they got back together and he's happy i'm happy for him like i want him to be happy i really do and you know i knew i'm a grown-up i knew hooking up with him wasn't a good idea so like I mean, it's not like he did anything that any guy wouldn't do. And he was 100% honest. He told me she was coming before it happened. But in case she posted on Facebook, well, here's a, in case you hear about it some other way. I was just thinking that's he didn't say that. That's just the only way that I would know because her and I are Facebook friends. There's no other <laughs> way. so funny. Yeah. Instagram me picking up my shit at my ex. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, uh, yesterday... She comes. I never hear from him yesterday. So I'm texting Chen last night, and I'm like... She's starting to lose her cool, like, around, like, 9 p.m. No, it was, like, midnight, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Uh, well, it was, I was midnight on the East Coast. <laughs> midnight. I was like, do you think I should... It's midnight somewhere. I was like, do you think I should just text him and see if he's doing okay? And uh, Chen is like... This is classic Jen, and this is why I love Jen. Jen goes, I think you should text him and go, hey, babe, I... I'm back from San Diego. Why don't I come over and kiss you goodnight? <laughs> yeah, I was saying, basically saying, 
make up an excuse to go over there and see if she's still there. Which I'm like, that's crazy. I'm not doing that. We've hooked up once. We're not together. He owes me nothing. Really. He was honest. And of course, to she's fight the- crazy, you have to think crazy. I, okay. I know. But the thing is, like, don't you think in this instance, the best move is to be chill? How is being chill? I have no chill, but yeah. I'm trying to have chill. So so I did text him, but you gave me the best. She said, <clears throat> just text him and go like, hey, thinking of you. So I did that. Yeah, yeah, just to see if he'd respond. Yeah, I did that at midnight, and he never answered. So I knew. I was like, oh, well, she's definitely still there. And then uh, and then he texted me this morning like, hey, yeah, um, you know, we're still we're still talking it out. Keep you posted, whatever. We're still fighting. We, yeah, and that's it. And that's what happened. And so basically, I was super bummed. Not so much bummed about this guy, but bummed because I fucked up my thirty day challenge, and I was making progress. And I was really proud, and I slid back. And then, in a moment of weakness, because I slid back, and ev- the problem is. Every time I, I fuck another guy, it makes me miss dickhead guy a little bit because dickhead is the best sex I've ever had in my life. So I was like, you know what? I'm depressed. I'm going to text dickhead and just try to try to bang him. I just want to I just want to cheer because that's how I cheer myself up. So, Aaron, you're going to love this. I go on Verizon to unblock dickhead's number because I had actually gone through the Verizon website and blocked it as like um, a spam number or whatever so that it would st- so that I couldn't even undo it on my phone because I'm crazy. She has to think <laughs> about it. Like she has to think about the decision to go on Verizon <laughs> and to unblock this number. Yeah. So I go on Verizon to unblock the number. It's not even something you can do drunkenly. Like you have to be home in front of a computer. And here's the best part. I go to unblock his number and I realize that his number hasn't even been blocked for days. So then I'm even more <laughs> depressed because I'm, like, I'm like, you. what? <laughs> I thought I was winning. <laughs> Like, I thought this asshole was probably sitting at his house like, fuck, I miss her. I can't believe she blocked my number. No, he hasn't even texted me. I had it blocked for like a day or two. And and, and then he probably was texting me then because that's when we were really like fighting. But then I remember now that I unblocked it one night. And then I was so angry when I realized this yesterday. That- she went to go block his number. I went to go block his number again, and I got a message from Verizon. Saying, crazy bitch, go to therapy. (laughs) You've blocked this number too many times. Yeah, I got a message from Verizon saying, this number cannot be blocked again on your account. (laughs) Because I've blocked it so many times that Verizon thinks I'm insane. (laughs) Verizon gave you the number for a therapist. So basically what I'm saying is now Dickhead's number isn't blocked, but I didn't text him. So at least that's progress. I'm making a little progress. But the point is the 30 day challenge did not go great for me, but I'd like to give props to Carrie and Ariel and Krista because they're all still doing it. They're all still doing great. And uh, Brenton, what do you think about uh, about this? Do you think there's anything for me to to do to better myself or? I think you keep putting yourself <laughs> Brenton in situations. He's like rubbing his eyes like in a way where you're just like, are we really doing this? Like, oh. First of all, every story started with, and then I had a few drinks. So, I mean, maybe it's a thing where the next time you do a 30-day challenge, you also swear off alcohol. That's probably and a good it'll point. probably be way easier. You know, that's a good idea because I did quit drinking for a little while. Yeah. A little while ago. And it went really well. Yeah. I didn't do anything too stupid. No. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> that solves that. You ever mm-hmm. think that it's just like you're, like you have just a very, and I mean this with all the love in the world, like an addictive. Impulsive. Impulsive personality. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you, it's, it is about power for you. And so like when you realize that the guy's number wasn't blocked, like you panicked immediately. Yeah. You did. You I, did. Had, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I'm from, not winning. It goes from zero to let's drive to his house <laughs> in <laughs> under 60 seconds. Yeah, but I don't drive to his house ever, but you would take me to his house. I would take you to his house. Yeah. In another person's Jen car. Jen has been wanting to go to this guy's house and camouflage since like my boyfriend. Want. My boyfriend has a police interceptor vehicle. 
<laughs> it's all black everything. It is, yeah. And it's really fast too. So if we is need to get away, no. <laughs> No, he just wanted an old, like an older, like cop car. Jen has been convinced that this guy's lying to me since, like, I think he's got like a baby mama or like multiple girlfriend situation. He definitely has. He, he, he sells drugs. Like, there's something, something going guns, on. We don't know. Mm-hmm. He did finally say to me the other day when we had our big fight when I blocked his number, the, for the last time. He but was, didn't block I, his number. Well, I did for like two days. I think I'm not sure. I, but anyway, he did say. Um, Look, I don't have a girlfriend, but you know I dating lots of people. <laughs> That's a quote. And I was like, lots? I didn't know. I thought lots is a lot. I thought maybe one or two, you know, others. I didn't know lots. I just, that situation so funny to me because I'm like, what part of living in Reseda with two other roommates that are also grown men <laughs> with like 17 pit bulls? In a, in a hacienda <laughs> with a car that's worth $25,000 that we've decided to put $20,000 worth of improvements into. <laughs> and we wear leather vests. What part of this guy says, I'm a stable relationship <laughs> person material? Nothing. But nothing. Nothing. I know. How do you explain that when you the, take him home for Christmas? I would never take him home for Christmas. Why are you pursuing it then? <sighs> you know why. Because... Because he, because I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to the to the sex. I'm addicted to the sex. I really am. But th- I, I'm trying. I'm trying. I haven't had sex with him in weeks. I think we should go to an AA meeting for sex. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just for it's just for addiction. It's not really for <gasps> love and alcohol. sex addicts anonymous. I yeah. actually tra- I thought about it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Well, um, we have to wrap up this episode. This was this was just an update. Uh, and uh no i we can't let you get out that easy though so since the 30-day challenge obviously failed like what happens to you now like is there any punishment for not like there should be punishment for not doing the 30-day challenge yeah there probably should be a punishment i didn't think of that um and obviously public hmm. humiliation does not bother you (laughs) because you're doing this show on a regular basis thanks jen (laughs) it's true Well, I told you that I, here's what I think the new plan should be, that for the next 30 days, I won't have sex for real. And I will only date guys that you set me up with. Okay. Starting this weekend. I need one. <laughs> okay. So this one week- Saturday, one Sunday. Really? And you can compare. Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Two but dates. I think that the other thing should be you should get more stable guy friends in your life that tell you how crazy you are. Mm-hmm. They do. They do. Well, like, I don't have anyone as stable as Brenton. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. You should get Brenton's number and text him be like, is this crazy? And he'll just reply, yes, auto reply. <laughs> <laughs> don't I do know. it. Don't do it, Kate. I mean. Put your phone down. I, right now I'm texting Jamar Neighbors who is coming on the next episode of Date Fails. He's waiting outside. Can so. you ask him when you have him on why he thought it was acceptable to show a girl? Oh, you're going to ask his, him. You're I'm asking staying. him. Yes, you're staying. I'm not staying. All right. Well, Jen, uh, this weekend, two dates. We'll do this. No sex and no drinking. I won't drink. You'll and now there. Brenton's your sponsor. And now Dr- Brenton, you're my sponsor. You're welcome. I feel bad. We it doesn't pay, <laughs> but you get to deal with crazy text at 3 a.m. Oh, it's really rewarding. This has gone really well today, I think. <laughs> I feel really great about this. By the way, I'm seeing a therapist now. I made my first appointment with the with the Laugh Factory Woo-hoo! therapist. I'm going to see the therapist. I'm going to figure the shit out. Figure it out. Um, and if any of you are struggling like I am, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, I love you guys. Follow Brenton. Brenton, where can they follow you? Uh, at PB Combs, at the Comedy Store, at All Things Comedy. He does car. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. Follow at Jennifer Sturger everywhere. And, everywhere. Uh, and I love you guys. Follow me at Kate Q Funny. This has been Date Fails. See you next time. Bye. Woo!